This is my first ever Seiko NH34 GMT watch build, and I am very excited to share it with you today. I think I did a good job, but I'll leave it to you to let me know how it went. If you like this watch and wish to build a similar one, links for the parts and tools will be in the video description. If you've seen some of my other builds, you know that swapping the rotor means a display case back, and you wouldn't be wrong. I picked this dark blue custom rotor. After installing it, I rotate it manually to make sure all the gears are moving as expected. After that I flip the movement back up and install this small washer that comes with the Seiko NH34 movement. I don't know exactly what it does, but it's important for the GMT part to work properly. I selected this deep blue dial with an inner GMT chapter ring. The indices are metallic baton style with a nice brushed finish. It comes with 4 dial feet and I need to cut 2 of them. For the Seiko NH series, I need to cut the foot just below the date window and the one parallel to it. Next, I file what remains of the removed feet so that the dial can sit flush on top of the movement. Otherwise, it wouldn't look as good as it should. Once I'm done, I give the entire thing a good clean up using an air blower. This should be enough to remove any metal filing or debris. Now I can install the dial on top of the movement. I just align the date window with the crown stem and firmly push down. I check for any gaps between the dial and movement, and there are none here, so we can move to the next step. Let's install the hands, or at least try to. First, I pull the crown to the second position, rotate clockwise, and stop as soon as the date switches. This indicates that the hands are in the midnight position. I stick the tip of the hand to a piece of rodico, line it up with the 12 o'clock index, and press it in place. After that, I check to see if the hand is rotating properly. Next goes the hour hand. I went for this beautiful set of sword hands with a very nice brushed finishing. The hour hand is installed the same way the GMT hand is. It's important to rotate the hands and make sure they are getting along before moving forward. The minute hand goes next, relatively easy to install. At this point, I am using a loop that's strapped to my head. It looks ridiculous but at least I can install the hands quicker and not lose my sanity while doing it. The second hand is last and it went in very smoothly, so I'm happy with that. This is probably something that I needed to do a lot earlier, but better late than never. I'm testing to check if the GMT hand quick setting is working, and it does. I'm happy this build is going smoothly so far. I give the dial and hands a quick cleanup, first using the air blower to remove any dust, I then stick the loop to my left eye and use it to spot any dirt or dust that's stuck on the dial, indices or hands. This is the case I chose for the build, a really beautiful and well finished case with angular sides. I removed the case back using the inflated rubber ball. I also removed the rubber gasket and put it in the lubricating container. I set that one aside for now. I unscrew the crown and remove the protective film. It might seem like a premature step, but it is important to do it now as it will help me spot any dust or dirt that's trapped under the crystal. Shout out to John P for suggesting the KNF lens pen to clean the crystal. This tool costs next to nothing, but does such a great job at making the crystal look flawlessly clean. Now it's time to remove the temporary crown and stem. I use this wooden tool to press the stem release as shown in the picture. I place the dial and movement inside the case and make sure they're pushed in place all the way. This stem comes with the movement and we'll need to cut it to size. Before that, I screw the crown in and slide it inside the movement. I take the measurement using a digital caliper and then proceed to mark the spot that needs cutting. After cutting the stem, I make sure it's a good fit and after two cuts, it looks good, so I apply Loctite to the tip of the stem. 
I also remove any excess glue from the stamp as I want none of that inside my movement. Now it's time to put on the case back, but I make sure not to forget about the rubber gasket to give the watch the best chance against the elements. After cleaning up the clear case back, I screw it in using the inflated rubber ball. And for the last step, the installation of the stainless steel bracelet. I struggled with this a bit because I want to avoid scratching the lugs as much as possible. Thankfully, it's all put in place and this is how the final result looks like. I'm not gonna lie, this is my favorite build so far. It really exceeded all my expectations and makes me want to build more GMT watches. The dark blue dial looks beautiful and is impeccably finished. The case has brushed sides and top a half brushed, half polished bezel, and a lovely looking slightly domed sapphire crystal. The angles of the case look so nice when looked at from the sides. The bracelet is great quality. It's an oyster style bracelet with a brushed finishing, and the mid links have this beautiful polished border that makes the bracelet stand out. It is sized using screws, which adds to the premium feeling of the bracelet. The clasp has four micro adjust holes, so getting a perfect fit shouldn't be an issue. To adjust the GMT hand, unscrew the crown and pull it to the first position. Rotating the crown counterclockwise allows to set the date and clockwise moves the GMT hand in one hour increments. Here are the case measurements. I gotta say this case is very compact and should suit a lot of wrist sizes. The thickness of the case isn't too bad either at 13.5mm. The only thing that worried me a bit is the male end links, which usually translate to the watch wearing bigger than its size. I am happy to report that on my 6.25 inch or 15.9 cm wrist, this watch looks perfectly sized. The links have nice articulation and the 4 micro adjust holes definitely help with the sizing. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it inspired you to build your own GMT watch. If it did, please leave a like and for more videos like these, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel as I am planning to share more awesome builds in the future. Don't forget, the links for parts and tools used in this video are in the video description. I highly recommend one of these two videos if you're looking for more watch builds. Thank you so much for watching.